every year, Edmonds and the vehicles and what drive the over a million miles. <laughs> their in-depth reviews and rankings will help you narrow your search. That's one way to you can find deal rock. ratings that will oh let you know if you're getting God. a fair offer. This is this get their honest take on all the latest vehicles. That's E-D-M-U-N-D-S dot com. Edmonds. Hey guys, what's going on? So uh, today officially marks my first week of uh, doing OTR. Um, right now I'm currently in uh, Pennsylvania just uh, doing my reset here so I can get my new my new 70 and keep rolling. But uh, I just wanted to kind of talk about the experience I've had so far. And uh, if you're looking to get into this industry, maybe my words might help you a little bit understand just what this entails when once you're by yourself i will say the biggest change of everything is definitely now that i'm on my own it's you have to figure out everything on your own like you don't have a trainer there anymore to tell you what to do and what you should be doing or don't do this don't park here don't park there don't do this don't do this that way it's all on you now everything that you've accumulated from your training from school is all applied here within the first week because within this first week i've already done four loads already i think in this in just a week's amount of time and that's that's a lot typically in a week's time with the 70 hour clock you're going to be able to do about three to four loads a week tops depending on uh if you're otr but if you're regional you might be able to do a little bit more but uh, if you're otr you're typically going to be able to do about like three to four a week and that's where i'm at right now i'm, I'm at, i think i did four deliveries this week and pretty much uh, <laughs> uh stayed all the way up in the north i had a bunch of loads up here in the northern states wisconsin i've been to wisconsin minnesota ohio uh, iowa illinois uh, pretty much all those little northern states there and over this past week it's been pretty cold up, <laughs> up here i don't think i've even seen what 40 degrees has looked like in since i since i left over a week ago uh, since i left texas uh, almost two weeks ago i haven't seen what 40 degrees looks like i've seen what negative 20 degrees looks like and it's pretty cold and i'll tell you for a south texas boy it uh I, I don't like it <laughs> personally I don't like it it's uh but you know I'll deal with it that's what you do when you take this kind of a job like you have to deal with a lot of things that you may not be comfortable with this job definitely takes you out of your comfort zone um, if you don't like traffic I don't know if this is the job for you because you're gonna hit traffic quite a bit sometimes and you're gonna have to maneuver your truck differently than you would a car and you have to be patient with yourself. You have to be, uh, you have to make sure not to take any unnecessary risks that you don't need to take. Um, so far, the drives have been pretty solid for me. I'm a lot of highway driving, very little in-city driving. Uh, here and there, there's you know in-city driving when I'm trying to make it to the shippers and whatnot. But for the most part, I'm doing nothing but highway driving and state highway driving. Um, so it's been pretty easy, easy, you know, smooth sailing for the most part. Uh, but I will say there are just some some cities like like Chicago. I had my first Chicago experience, and people have always told me about Chicago. Like, man, the roads are crazy over there. People drive nuts, and I'm like, eh, you know, I'm from Texas, people drive crazy in Texas, so I'm used to it. Well, here in, in Chicago, when I went to Chicago, man, people drive nuts over there. They drive crazy. They'll cut you off, no matter if you're if you got this much space, they'll cut you off. And it's like what? And it's like what in the hell? It's a very, uh, <laughs> very interesting, and uh, it was uh, it was quite the experience, you know. I'm watching people swerve in and out of lanes. I saw one truck. I actually got it on video. I saw one truck that decided he wanted to get on the exit ramp, and he was two lanes off. He was already almost past it. He was already past the point where you can enter it. He was kind of like parallel with it, two lanes over, not the lane over, but two lanes over. He had his blinker on and he stopped and i don't know why anybody let this guy in because they probably shouldn't have because that was a big risk but he takes it across a lane on the highway on a on a on an interstate highway and takes it across and then goes on 
on the ramp. <laughs> it was just one of the craziest things I had seen because as a truck driver, you don't make those kinds of decisions like that. If you miss your exit, deal with it. Move on to the next one. Go hit the next exit. If you got it, if, if if your path or your route or whatever is the way that you that it, it, the only way you can get back to your route is that one exit that you missed. There's a way to get back to it. You're gonna have to turn yourself around and come back to it. But uh, you know, it's one of those things where I don't think it's that big of a deal to turn it around. You're gonna you're gonna waste. You know, you're gonna lose 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. But you'd rather just take it from one lane to the other, so that you have a nice. Uh, so that if somebody's you know, uh, you know, messing around on their cell phone, looking looking down instead of uh, instead of looking up at what they're doing. Next thing you know, they're gonna look up and there's a tra and there's a trailer right in front of them, and they're gonna ram into that trailer. And you know, that's the kind of things that you just don't. For me, especially as I'm learning and whatnot. I don't want to make any kind of dumb mistakes like that. If I miss my exit, I miss my exit. I go to the next one and I turn around. If I absolutely need to go that route, I will hit the next exit and I will find a way to turn around. I won't take that kind of a risk. But that guy decided that day, I don't care. I'm going to go across. But those are the kind of things that I'm learning out here is that some people are really good at this and some people are very risky at this. And I want to be one of those people that I want to do everything the right way. And I want to make sure that I'm being safe, that um, I'm not going to cause any harm to anybody, to myself, to anybody's property, anything like that. So that's what I'm learning. That's what I've been doing this first week. I've been taking these drives uh, real safe, taking everything that I learned in training and applying them, and then teaching myself some new things too. Like, oh, I didn't know I could do this, so let me do this, or uh, let me do some trip planning. Let me figure out how to do better trip planning. Let me, let me. Uh, figure out fuel mileage stuff and things like that how far can i go in a day with my hours those are the kind of things that i'm learning uh, as i go and there's plenty of youtube videos that you can watch and uh, plenty of materials out there you can watch to get all this information as you're as you're driving and learning especially for me i try to take in as much information as possible for, uh, but a lot of it is figuring it out on your own getting on getting on your your getting in your notepad and just kind of writing out things until you kind of have a fit until you have a plan and figure it out and then getting yourself on that in front of that in front of that windshield and on that wheel and driving this thing and then you know i would say that one of the hardest parts is definitely backing up still for me right now backing this thing up has been easy at times and very difficult at times some of the shippers that I've been to, I've been able to dock the thing in like 15, in like 10, 15 minutes, which for me, I think that's pretty good because I'm being safe. I'm doing my get out and looks. Uh, and then there's some places where it took me 30 minutes because I just couldn't, because I was messing it up and I couldn't figure out how to get it back. And I had to keep kind of resetting and moving back a little bit, pulling up a bit, moving back until I got it in the right spot. And eventually I got it back. I haven't had to have anybody help me like get out and say, hey, I need some help. I just can't do this. I've been able to figure it out on my own. Uh, there was this one night where I was in, uh, I was stuck in a bind. I was out of hours. I was at a pilot and it was full. And there was a couple of spots and I scouted out some of them. And I, for the life of me, I tried to get in about two or three spots and I just could not back the truck up. I couldn't get it right. I was doing something wrong. It must've been my setup uh, because I, I wasn't able to get it into the spot without fearing that I was my front end as I'm backing up was gonna was gonna tie into the other trucks so with that being said I decided that I think I thought that the best thing for me to do was just reset get out of it go find a spot and eventually I found a spot that I thought was gonna be pretty easy and I ended up making it very very difficult and making it very very tight and that was probably my longest one that one took me about uh I want to say to me about 40 minutes to figure it out but i was committed to the spot already at this point i didn't want to pull out again and try to look for another spot because there really wasn't any so i was like you know i'm committed to this spot i think i have figured out figured out how to do it i have to i'm gonna have to go all the way this way bring it back in and then i'm gonna have to come back this way and then bring it in this way because there was another there was a wall over here on this side with a couple of pillars that were just making it difficult for me to come back and, and, and pull up and pull up all the way so i did it i kind of messed around somebody came around and was like 
waiting till they could park into a spot they were cool enough to come outside and say hey man do you need some help or anything and i was like man i don't want to ask you for that but if you're offering it i would just you know just spot me because i think i got it but i just need someone to spot me so he spotted me and the thing with spotters that i always that i always say and i've always been told is be careful not to rely 100 percent on a random spotter because they might not have your best interest they might decide well, this guy's wasting my time. I'm going to waste his too and, and whatnot. And they're not sitting in the truck with you. They're just spotting you. But luckily, this guy was cool. And I could tell he he just, he just wanted to help me out so that because if I got into the spot, he was going to be able to go into his spot. So uh, anyways, that's what, that's what I did. And I got into that spot. So other than that, all these other backs have been pretty uh, easy, not too bad, nothing too crazy. Um, I try to... I try to, to to back up as much as I can because I need to practice and I need to get better at it. So anytime, any opportunity that I have to back, I will back. But if it's like if it's already like late at night and I'm already coming up against my hours, if I see a straight back, I'm taking it. Or if I see a pull through spot, I'm taking it because it's already late. I don't want to mess around. But if I got time, I'm gonna try. I try to back up and do that just so that I can um, get the experience on it and whatnot. But other than that, I mean, it's been pretty, it's been pretty neat out here. Uh, it's been really, really cold. And that's why I, um, I, I'm going to suggest this to people that are, that are wanting to do this or that are getting into this. And especially if you're from the South and you're not used to how cold it is up in the North, because us Southerners, we don't own winter gear. We own a hoodie and some sweatpants. That's about it. If you, if you're a Southerner, you probably don't own things like a, like a weather, like a all weather jacket, uh, long johns, snow boots, <laughs> things of that sort. You don't own things like that because you don't need it in Texas. You don't need it in South, in, in, in the South, you know, the South part of America and whatnot. So what I will say is that if you are going to thinking about going OTR, you probably are going to hit up spots where you're going to get into sub freezing temperatures. So do like what I do like what I didn't do at first and what I ended up doing is go get yourself an all weather jacket, something that'll keep you nice and warm and not wet, nice and dry. Go get yourself some long johns, some thermals. They help out a lot. Go get yourself some boots if you don't already have some solid some solid boots to keep your feet warm because you'll need some of those and get yourself some nice thick uh gloves and uh and probably a, a beanie or toboggan or whatever you want to call it. Get yourself one of those. You may not be using it all the time, but I guarantee when you get into 10 degree weather like I was or negative 20 degree weather like I was, you're going to wish you had it. I didn't have it. I had it a little bit at that time, but when I hit that negative 15 and I felt what it was like for the first time in my life, I was like, what the hell? This sucks. I, <laughs> I don't like the way this feels. And I, I mean, I'm wearing jeans. I'm wearing, you know, shoes and I'm thinking, you know, I'm good. I'm cool. No, it, I was freezing and my hands were freezing freezing cold they were almost going numb because i didn't have thick enough gloves to keep them to keep them warm so i went i went to the nearest you know walmart that i could find and i bought all those items and i was good from there i'm good I mean, i'm good now i got everything that i need to survive uh super sub freezing temperatures now and whatnot so i mean it's been pretty cool um just learning everything i i absolutely enjoying this um that's what i wanted to say is that i enjoy this so far it's been it's very very challenging it's like nothing i've ever done before i'm you i've i've been used to being in jobs where i sit on a or i sit in a chair behind a desk looking at a screen all day long uh sometimes i've had jobs where you know i might do some hands-on kind of it work kind of stuff or i was in retail for 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 uh, about six seven years and so you know you're moving around doing stuff like that but i've never done anything like this before so this experience has kind of opened my eyes to just like wow this is this is what the reality of being a truck driver is it's more than just getting in the truck and driving it's 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 prep it's it's pre-planning your trips it's it's meal it, it's figuring out how you're gonna how are you gonna eat how are you gonna sleep when are you gonna sleep um having making sure like when you break down, do you know how to get yourself out of a bind? Do you do you know how to uh, how to how to how to do your own maintenance on your truck if you need to, and if you need to do right away maintenance? Do you know the tricks of the trade of unfreezing your brakes? Things things of things that just become very important when you need when you need it. And these are things that 
you don't typically have to worry about when you go into an office and sit in a chair all day long. These, these are things that you worry about when you're out here. Different things. How Do you know how to drive in the elements? Do you know how to put on tire chains? Do you know how to do all these different things? It's very, 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 very challenging. I like the challenge. I'm a person that's... I, I enjoy new challenges and that's why i decided to do this in the first place because what i was doing just wasn't really hitting it for me anymore i didn't like sitting behind a chair and looking at a computer screen all day anymore i didn't like taking phone calls from people all day long just complaining to me all day long in my ear about things that i can't control but i have to sit there and be like yes yes ma'am yes ma'am oh i understand sir i got it uh-huh let me see what i can do let me put in a ticket for you let me do this oh uh, and then you have people yelling at you all day long and it just because it's just tiring and sucks and there's no challenge in that where's the challenge in that where where's where's the reaching for a goal that I didn't feel like I was reaching for a goal I felt like I was just there making money and that's fine sometimes and for some people that they like that but for me I needed something different I needed a challenge and I wanted to get out of where I was and I thought you know I want to travel a little bit more I want to see things that I haven't seen you know I'm 35 years old and I barely get out of Texas you know I've been out of Texas maybe like three or four times uh in my whole entire life like I have you know I've driving to Orlando or driving to New Orleans and whatnot. But I never, you know, different things like that. You know, I could probably count on one hand how many times I've left Texas. So I thought, you know, I want to get out. I want to see things. And I thought, you know, I started watching other YouTubers, uh, truck driving videos and whatnot. And I was like, man, that looks pretty fun. That looks pretty cool. It looks really challenging. So I took the risk and I did it. And here I am. And now one week later, um, it's been really cool. And it doesn't come without its challenges. It doesn't come without a little bit of its frustrations. But at the end of the day, I feel like, man, this is really neat. And I enjoy doing this. And I'm pretty, and I feel like I'm gonna, going to just get better and better at it as I go along. I have that kind of drive that that's what I want to do. But yeah, guys, I wanted to give you, I just wanted to give you an update on that. Let you know how I'm doing. Uh, give you some insight on it. Uh, before I, I leave you, I do want to kind of see if I can give you some tips for those of you that are looking to get uh, that are just about to get started. Maybe you're in school already, or maybe you're in, you're currently in training. If your trainer hasn't told you these things, I want to give you just a short list of things that you want to check mark before you hit the road for the first time on, uh, by yourself to make sure that you have all these things with you because they're going to help you out. One is very important: food. Make sure you have some kind of food uh, in your truck with you at all times in the event that you have to stop at a place that doesn't offer food options right you have to stop for the night and you just you're out of hours you can't go anywhere else and you stop at a rest stop and all they have is bathrooms but no food and you have no food in your truck how are you going to eat you have to eat right you can't just not eat so make sure you take uh some food with you um if you have if you can take if you have a microwave in your truck take soups with you they're really easy you know things that are microwavable that are that you, if you don't have, if you have a fridge and a and a microwave then man you should you should be stocking up with food that you can that uh, that you can um, make really really quick in a microwave if you don't have a microwave or a refrigerator there's plenty of other options you know get get a loaf of bread get a loaf of bread get you some peanut butter and jelly those things uh, don't don't go bad without refrigeration so you know in, in the event you just need something to eat get you some get you some crackers get you some uh some nuts some chips uh whatever you feel you need to sustain you to make sure that you're not gonna starve out here well if you don't if you don't decide to stock yourself up with food so get yourself food make sure you got food for the road make sure you got water for the road if 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 you're not a water drinker buy whatever it is you like to drink if you like to drink lots of soda which i wouldn't recommend out here because you know it's gonna put the pounds on you if you drink a lot of soda out here and not and too much caffeine is not a good thing but i'm not a judge it's your life you do what you want to do with it if you feel like you like to only drink sodas then make your make sure you have some sodas here for you to drink and then uh make sure you just have something to drink right for you same concept if you go to a stop they don't have any drink or food options you want to be able to at least have something to drink uh chewing gum i think is a big one for me because if you ever feel like you're kind of dragging on a drive and you just need something to kind of keep you going put a piece of chewing gum in your mouth and that'll typically kind of keep you alert and whatnot um as far as um items to bring 
to bring to make sure that you have with you make sure you have paper towels like cleaning items paper towels uh shop towels uh get you a bottle of windex uh because you're gonna need that plenty of times to clean the windows while you're out here especially if you're in areas like where i am where there's a bunch of snow everywhere and it just gets all over your truck and all over your windows and you have to almost clean those daily so get yourself a bottle of windex some paper towels some shop towels um disinfectant wipes if you want to keep uh you know your stuff disinfected and stuff like that that's up to you um as far as personal hygiene stuff to bring as much personal hygiene stuff with you as possible toothbrushes mouthwashes uh deodorants um bring you get yourself some wipes baby wipes um because in the event, once again, you stop at a place, right? They don't have showers. You can't take a shower. And depending on how you are about your hygiene, at least, at the very least, what you can do is you can take a baby wipe and you can wipe yourself, you know, with it in, in your areas and whatnot, just to kind of give you, you know, a dirty, a dirty bath, as the, you know, I like to call them. It's still something to keep you at least somewhat clean if you to hold you over until you can get to a shower. Uh, bring a towel with you at least bring at least one or two of your own bath towels with you because some of the some of the stops that you stop at are not going to have um provide you with towels so you're gonna need to provide your own towels so bring sure you have at least one or two bath towels with you that'll help in the event that um you get to a place that has showers for you but they don't offer towels so bring at least a towel bring plenty of change with you coin change is good for many different reasons it's good for the toll roads if you don't have if you don't have a toll a toll pass which i would recommend getting getting toll passes for your truck uh, if you're a company driver your company should provide you with toll passes but if you're not if you're an owner operator you probably need to provide your own tolls but if you're just going to say i'm just going to pay for it out of pocket get yourself some change bring make sure you have change on you another thing change is good for laundry out here on the road you will have to do laundry every now and then and most places that offer laundry uh, most truck stops that offer laundry services you're gonna have to pay out of pocket for them and you're gonna have to pay with quarters so if you don't have quarters and you don't have cash you can't do laundry so make sure you have uh, some at least you know I, I typically like to carry at least 10 bucks of quarters with me uh, just in case because you never know when I might need them I could I could need them for uh, for laundry, I could need them for toll roads, and I could need them for air for uh, for uh, for air uh, machines, like to put air in my tires and whatnot. So, I would like to carry at least ten dollars of quarters with me. So, I would I would do the same. Uh, zip tie. Uh, now let's now let's go with tools here real quick. Just a couple of starter tools. You can accumulate I, like me. I'm gonna keep accumulating tools as I go along. As I as I see that this is where I could use this. This is where I could need this. So I'm gonna buy this, 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 this. But I did want to at least bring a starter set with me just to make sure that I wasn't going to be stranded out here or in case I got myself into a bind. I could get out. I could get myself out. You might need your different tools for these different things. But I'm gonna give you just a small list of important things to bring. Get yourself at least one tool bag with at least you know a standard set of screwdrivers, flatheads, and Phillips. Uh, get yourself a socket set. Um, most most places sell you know fifty piece, a hundred piece socket sets for less than twenty bucks. Get yourself at least one. Um, get yourself. Uh, make sure that you have a broom, a big push broom, or or uh, if you want to spend the money, get yourself a uh, a air a air blower. Um, because you're gonna need that to help clean your trailers and whatnot. So make sure you got that. Make sure you got uh, a tire iron to be able to pull nails out of your trailers and whatnot as they get loaded and whatnot. Some of them put uh, the little wood blocks to kind of hold the hold the freight in place. And sometimes they'll just pull up, they'll just rip those off, and the nails will stay in the trailer. And you got to take the the nail puller and pull it out. Make sure you got that. Um, make sure you got. Um, straps straps are always going to be used here by shippers most of the time yeah make sure you carry at least four to eight uh pull uh, strap downs those will definitely because sometimes you're going to have to give them two and you may not get two back you may not get those straps those straps back you may they may be gone so make sure you just give yourself about uh four to eight straps in your truck um carry uh fluids 
yeah, make sure you carry the essential, the three, the three essential fluids you want to carry with you. Washer fluid, for sure. Carry at least two gallons of it because you will go through a lot of washer fluid in the truck. Carry at least a gallon of oil with you, and carry uh, at least a gallon of um, coolant with you. Those three things are essential things you want to start off with. If you want to get all the other fluids and whatnot to bring with you, like ant like anti gel and additives and all that other fun stuff that's up to you if you want to do that i'm not telling you you need to do that but that's up to you um but at least those three essential fluids are are good things to keep in your truck because you never know when you might need those and you might not be around a space where you can go and buy them so just carry them around with you um carry around the little washers that go on the on the airlines on the glad hands those little rubber washers, they do wear out from time to time. They do tear sometimes depending on how you're treating them and just, you know, through time and whatnot. And those little washers could be messed up on trailers you might be picking up. So you check it and you say, oh, crap, there's like half of this washer is gone or it's completely gone. You can't put your glad hand on there. You can, but you're going to be leaking air. So, But if you have an extra one in your truck, you just pop it on there and you're good to go. If you don't you got to go ask somebody if they got any extras you got to go and maybe pull one off another trailer you know just kind of secret secret thing you know but uh carry a couple of those with you and whatnot they're fairly inexpensive they sell them everywhere they sell them at tractor supplies at all the truck stops fairly inexpensive you know they usually come in packs and just like make sure you have a couple of those before you leave uh tape duct tape make sure you got duct tape because you never know when you're gonna need to patch up a hole in a trailer uh, and duct tape will get you past the uh, DOT until you can get the trailer repaired. So just put a piece of duct tape over it. So make sure you get duct tape. Hammers. This is one that's very, very important. I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to tell you what kind of hammer to buy. When it comes to a hammer, if you want to bring a normal household, like just, which typically it's like a pound and a half hammer. Um, that's fine. But the reason, the biggest reason you need the hammer is in case you're freezing temperatures and you and you lock and you you know you set your 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 brakes for the trailer nine times out of ten when you wake up in the morning or when you leave them there for over a couple of hours and you come back and you try to leave those brakes are going to be locked they're going to be frozen and you're not going to be able to move until you get them unfrozen and the only ways that you can unfreeze them is you can either rock the truck back and forth until you loosen them up enough where they release and then you can roll which that method can be very difficult if they're just really 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 frozen the other thing you but the other thing you can do and typically what everybody does is they take a hammer and they bang on the uh on the drums not the not not the linings not the shoes the drums outside of the drum the top the bottom until you hear those brakes release then once they release, you're good to go and you can roll. But if you don't have a hammer that's strong enough, you may not be able to get those brakes to release. So I would recommend a three pound little, it's, it looks like a sledge, but it's, just, it's a hand hammer. It's, a, it's like a sledge hammer, but not like a long one. It's got like the small, the small um, rod, but it's got a sledge, it's got a sledge hammer head that's three, that's three pounds, 20 bucks at tractor supply. You can probably find it cheaper everywhere else, but around $20 or less for this thing. That thing packs a punch. And when you, and you, and when you go out there, if your brakes are frozen, you take that sledge and you just bang on that thing. Like if you were Phil Collins, bah, 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 boom, 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 if you want to, right? <laughs> Until you hear those brakes release. But that hammer is so strong, it will it will do the trick and it won't break the drum. You don't have to worry about that. Your drum's not gonna break. Just don't hit don't hit your shoes with it. Just hit the hit the drums. Bang on it. A couple of times, you should be good to go. But definitely make sure you have that because if you don't have a hammer strong enough to help you release your brakes when it's freezing, you're gonna be stuck. And you're going to have to call roadside assistance and they're going to have to come out. And all they're going to do is come out. And they're going to come out with their hammer. They're going to do what you could have done. And, you, you know, you just you burn two hours of time waiting for a waiting, waiting for a guy to come when you could have done it yourself if you would have had that hammer. 
that's a big one for me hammer uh then you know all the other you can bring all the other tools wrench you can bring wrenches with you you can bring uh needle nose pliers with you you can bring uh zip ties are big zip ties are huge they're they're a big game changer for anything in a truck bungee cords get you a set of bungee cords to uh, you know to secure your things in the cab uh but other than that i mean do bring what you want with you this is your space you personalize it i've already personalized it i put some lights up so but uh bring as much thing as you can with you this is your truck this is your house this is your home while you're on the road so get every treat it like you would your own you have all the stuff you need at your house to make sure that you can live in your house get all the stuff you need to live in this house too but uh, that's all I got, guys. I mean, it's it's been really neat out here. It's been really cool. I can't wait to keep uh, shooting more videos uh, and letting you know just how the experience is going as this as I continue this journey and whatnot. Hopefully soon I'm going to get uh, some attachments so that I can put the camera uh, outside so that I can record some of my backing up maneuvers so that y'all can see that. But uh, if there's anything you ever want to ask me, leave it in the comments. I will, I will answer the comments. If you like what you're watching, feel free to subscribe. We're going to be putting a lot, uh, out a lot more content as I go forward. But uh, other than that, guys, stay safe out there. Drive safe for all you other drivers. I'll see you on the road.